The Home Pros Radio Show. Hello and welcome to the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. I'm Tommy Donovan with RIC Home Inspections and your co-host for the Home Pros Radio Show. To shoot us your question by email, simply visit our website at homeprosradio.com or email us directly at ask at homeprosradio.com. There are always plenty of questions that we receive when we're not on the air, like this listener who was looking for some advice on crawl space ventilation. All right. Well, we heard from one uh, listener who texted in this question. I'm having trouble with condensation in my crawl space in my new house. The ground is completely covered in six mil poly. That's polyethylene for um, the nerds out there. And water seems to be dripping from HVAC ducts. Should foundation vents be open or closed? I keep getting mixed answers from different subcontractors. This is a question that I salivate over because now I have an opinion on this and, um, there are all kinds of folks who have opinions on it. And, you know, they say about opinions. Um, tell me about your opinion, Shane. My opinion is going to be open. Yeah. That's what I say too. Keep your uh, keep your crawl space vents open, especially in a situation like this. What's causing that uh, moisture? On uh, and I've been fooled before. I've been under a home thinking that there's a leak somewhere. Uh, I see water dripping off a copper supply line, and I'm thinking, oh gosh, there's a leak. Yeah, there's pinhole leaks all through this crawl. Space. <laughs> that happened once. Honestly, I'm gonna say honestly, when I was when I first started in this business, I was like, for some reason, this whole supply system has pinhole leaks. Did you They're write just it up? Dripping everywhere. No, I just kind of mentioned it. <laughs> but uh, while well, I had mentioned it, there is evidence of leaks. Yeah. Um, but it actually turned out, um, and th- this is what tends to happen. Um, you you get okay, so you have. You have this. This especially happens in the summer where we get really oh, yeah. humid, and I'm I'm guessing this this listener probably had wouldn't have noticed this maybe a month ago when when he or she was not running the HVAC or the cooling system. What happens is you should get cool air ducts, cool air moving through those air ducts, and then you have cold water supply lines. What ends up happening is you get that warm, moist air into your crawl space and it can't get out. So what will happen is is that air will come in contact with the cool ducts or the cool supply lines, cause the moisture in there, that humidity to condense, and then it ends up the moisture ends up right on to right on those materials, whether it's water pipes or HVAC ductwork, and then they just start to drip moisture. Yeah. Another clue, if you have issues like that, um, is if you ever go into a crawl space and you and your insulation looks like you're in a cave, like the insulation is kind of stringy, kind of hanging, dangling like it's all down, falling down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that is also an indication, even if you're going in your crawl space in the dead of winter, that that's an indication if the insulation looks like that that during the summer months that you've got some humidity issues. Yeah. Any anytime I see. Uh, Going into a crawl space and I start seeing insulation. That's my, my first thought is the, uh, you know, high moisture levels. Uh-huh. Then secondly, I think of like pest infestations. But, um, but yeah, if you see a bunch of insulation falling down, there is a reason. But nine times out of ten, it is in fact the, the high moisture levels. Mm-hmm. And it looks like some, something got in there and tore it up, but really it's, it's the moisture. And that's mainly why we want to actually have those vents open. We want air to, it's okay to let that air in, but we want to also get it out um, and uh, allow that humidity to leave the crawl space. We do not live in a climate where, you know, if you watch HGTV and DIY and these other shows, I mean, some of these shows are from Canada, right? Yeah. And uh, we don't live in, an, in a climate where we need to be closing up our crawl space vents during the winter, for example. You know, there's some parts of the country – um, that don't have basements and still have crawl spaces, uh, that do get quite a bit colder than we do. And, um, freezing pipes is a real worry. I mean, it happens here, but, um, you know, it, 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 here in this area, in this climate, if we're going to close our crawl space vents, we just want to do it temporarily. Yeah. You and know. open it back up when it's done. Yeah. You got to remember because otherwise you will see that you will see the effects of Having those vents wide, uh, or having, having them closed. I've seen it way too many times under a home where, uh, you've got, uh, moldy issues or, uh, deteriorated wood under a home 
because uh, that, that moisture is just not getting out. But that's what it's coming from, and that's what's causing it on your HVAC ducts. Crawl space fence, critical to keeping moisture at bay and ensuring that you have a healthy environment beneath your home. You know, windows are an important factor when it comes to controlling the environment inside your home if you're considering an upgrade. Here we have some important details to keep in mind to ensure that your potential window purchase is not a pain. Uh, we came across this article this week. Um, June brings not only warmer months, warmer weather, but also deep discounts on summer-related items. Consumer Reports tracks the prices of the products that they test, right? Uh, so they're testing all this stuff and reporting on it, but they're also tracking the prices as they do this. So naturally, they can kind of tell month by month uh, when uh, trends uh, you know, prices tend to trend lower throughout the year. So they put the they put a list of items together um, that uh, you can actually re- earn some deep discounts by investing in or, or purchasing now. One of those is windows. If you're planning on sticking around your home for a while and are looking to make a big purchase, you may want to consider replacing your windows. According to Consumer Reports, June is the month to find deep discounts on windows. I never knew that. So uh, what are the benefits of it? Of replacing your windows. Energy? Energy savings. Energy savings is one of them. So new windows will make your home quieter and less drafty. Um, Energy Star, if you're familiar with them, they're, they're, um, they're an EPA, a voluntary EPA program that helps businesses and individuals um, uh, improve their products and then uh, individuals. Uh, helps businesses improve their products and helps individuals improve energy efficiency. Um, they work, they work in partnership with, uh, according to their, uh, notes here, 18,000 private and public sector organizations. And what they do is they'll test and evaluate products and then rate them as Energy Star, uh, approved. Um, so they will actually, they, they do this process with Windows. So one of the things that Consumer Reports recommends is, purchasing energy star rated uh windows so they can save um certainly save on your um uh, utility bills now how much do you think that would be what's the savings yeah just a guess i mean i don't expect you to i'm gonna go get it save 30 percent 30 percent they say around let's see it looks like around 12 percent is what you could expect I must so, have been putting in some good replace, windows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Re, um, replacing windows can be pricey. So they add up, too. I mean, you're looking at, you know, what is your average window run? Maybe per a window, couple hundred bucks? Installed, you're looking at, yeah, the window's probably a couple hundred bucks, but installed, you're looking at 350 a window, typically. Mm-hmm. Uh, 350, I've heard 400. Um, so, yeah, you count your windows and multiply it by that. It can add up pretty quickly. So, um it can, it, so you add all that up, it, it, it can take years to recoup the cost of replacing your windows. That's why I preface this with, if you're staying in your home for a while. Right. Uh, because if you're just going to turn around, I had one person, um, one friend of mine say, hey, I'm thinking we're probably going to move in the next year or so. We're going to replace windows. And I'm like, not a good idea. Right. Not a good right. idea. Because that, uh, yeah, as a homeowner, you have to think about, all right, is this... What, what, I always like to t- ask them. I use an investment term. I'm like, what's your time horizon in this house? Yeah. So if you're going to be moving in a couple of years, you probably don't want to jump too quickly to do things like replace windows or re- sometimes you have to put a new roof on. But if you're going to spend thousands, um, you might want to just sell it as is. You might be better off. Um, but, uh, windows are one of those things. Yeah. You um, just have to look at the return on investment in that because I mean, I don't. I don't know that your house is going to appraise any higher with new because windows. You have new windows. You may yeah. sell it a little quicker, but and you always have to balance that out somehow. Mm-hmm. It's usually cosmetics are the things that are going to um, give you a good short term uh, return. So, according to Energy Star, if you own a two thousand square foot home with approximately three hundred square feet of window space, gas, heat, and electric cooling, you could expect to save four hundred thirty five dollars annually. When switching from single pane windows to new Energy Star rating double pane windows, that's pretty. That's pretty hefty there. Um, 
if you're if you already have dual pane windows and you're switching them out, then we decrease uh, the savings. You're looking at fifty five dollars annually when switching from other uh, dual pane windows. Considering that, you may spend anywhere according to these notes eight thousand to twenty four thousand dollars on that same home just replacing all the windows. So it can add up. Yeah. And then if you think about, well, if I'm only going to be saving X amount of money a year, even even $435 annually, you're looking at years before you see that money again. You can see how well, you can see what it takes to recoup that investment. Some helpful tips there on deciding whether that window replacement is in order. One feature we'd like to share on our show is the Home Pros Radio Show Closing Contractor Mystery Sound. Here is one we played for a couple of weeks with no guesses from our audience. Maybe I made this one a little too hard to figure out. But our announcer, Darren Fitzgerald, was in the studio with us one weekend as we finally revealed the answer. No one can seem to get our mystery sound. That's because it's ridiculous. (laughs) Here we go. Ready? You know what it is, Shane? I I have a good idea. What is it? It sounds like it's a it's a fireplace yeah. uh, lighting because I can hear the flames start. And apparently <laughs> really? there's yeah. there's some kind of somebody falling. Some, in the there's background? something in the in the gas line or something to make that whistling sound because usually mm-hmm. when you hear sounds like that, there's some kind of a obstruction mm-hmm. or orifice that's uh, making it. Mm. This is partially blocked. Ooh, jeez. Yeah, so, so it's like a kazoo. You turn on your gas logs, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like one of those. No, it sounds, it sounds like, like one of those cheap instruments they give to kindergartners. Yeah. And they're like, now we're gonna make music. Yeah, no, it's noise. Here you go. There you go. Um, or you. you know, you, you have your kids that you're out with your kids out to eat, and they get their little kid sippy cups and straws. Will make the sound. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not annoying. So yeah. Play it again. So. <laughs> Right now, I've got an hour away from right. four children, so right. play it again. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's uh, if your gas logs sound like that, it's usually caused. There are a couple of different. Uh, there are a couple of different causes. Shane, you mentioned one. There's an obstruction possibly in the gas line. Mm-hmm. Um, also, another cause could be um, uh, the the connector, the gas connector. Um, the gas enters the gas fireplace um, through a flexible connector, typically. Um, newer ones, they're required to. That must be installed with the unit. And those connectors, if they're if they come corrugated, it could be just the sound that that connector makes. Right. So, um, that's that's one of a couple of different things. If you have an issue with your pilot light, it could be the pilot light not, and if it's improperly set, it may need some uh, fine tuning in order to eliminate that noise. So that is your closing contractor. Mystery sound. I think I'm going to make it easier next time. Maybe do something like this for the next mystery sound. <laughs> See if anybody can... I told you it was busted. <laughs> now there's a leak in the Figure ceiling. Figure that one out. Well, that's going to do it for this version of the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. I'm your co-host, Tommy Donovan, with RIC Home Inspections. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to be sure you receive the latest updates from the Home Pros. And, of course, you can always find us online at homeprosradio.com. Thanks for listening to the Home Pros Radio Show. Meet more Home Pros at homeprosradio.com. There, you can also catch full episodes of our show, along with additional information to ensure that your home is in perfect shape. It's the Home Pros Radio Show, brought to you by Prime Lending, home loans made simple. The Home Pros Radio Show, online at homeprosradio.com or on the radio at 94.5 WGTK, The Answer.